And it shall come to pass in the last days, declares God, that I shall pour out my Spirit on all flesh. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit from the Gospels to Revelation. Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he will declare justice to the Gentiles. Concerning his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. The angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. While he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And it shall come to pass in the last days, declares God, that I shall pour out my Spirit on all flesh. John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. I did not recognize him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. As for me, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. It came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. Then a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, 
the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. And immediately the Spirit drove him out into the wilderness. Now Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Therefore, just as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, as when they provoked me as on the day of trial in the wilderness. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, returned to Galilee, and news about him spread through all the surrounding region. For he whom God sent speaks the words of God, for he does not give the Spirit sparingly. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God? Therefore, since he has been exalted at the right hand of God, and has received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father. He has poured out this which you now see and hear. One day, while he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting nearby, and the power of the Lord was with him to heal. Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I perceived power going out from me. And Jesus, 
immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? Now Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him for power came out from him and healed all of them. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For the one who serves Christ in this way is acceptable to God and has human approval. At that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and have revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. Therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, if any consolation of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law, and those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him. Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Worship in the Spirit of God and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh.
the one who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who overcomes, I will grant to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. For those who live according to the flesh set their mind on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. The one who has an ear let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone, and a new name written on the stone, which no one knows except the one who receives it. And my speech and my preaching were not in persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of the Father who speaks in you. Now when they bring you before the synagogues and the officials and the authorities, do not worry about how or what you are to speak in your defense or what you are to say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. For the kingdom of God is not in words, but in power. But you, beloved, build yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. And since we have the same Spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore we also speak.
but it is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us by putting his seal on us and giving us his spirit in our hearts as a pledge. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building, being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his Spirit. But you are not in the flesh, but in spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. By this we know that we remain in him and he in us, because he has given to us of his Spirit. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of our salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the guarantee of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. For our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we prove to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you all know. Not that we are competent of ourselves to claim anything as coming from us. Our competence is from God who has made us competent to be ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. And do not get drunk with wine, in which there is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, 
speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your hearts to the Lord, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to our God and Father. Therefore, there is now no condemnation at all for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. And you show that you are a letter of Christ, prepared by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on the tablets of the human heart. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God. For he received honour and glory from God the Father, when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain, so we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this, as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation, because no prophecy ever came by human will, but men and women moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. in order that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. In former generations this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, that the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the Gospel. Make every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit.
And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. On one occasion, while he, Jesus, was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as he did upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he used to say, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, if God gave them the same gift as he also gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? When the goodness and loving kindness of God our Saviour appeared, he saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit. This Spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. And this is what some of you used to be, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring us to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit. But 
but we must always give thanks to God for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you from the beginning for salvation through sanctification, by the Spirit and through belief in the truth. For this purpose he called you through our proclamation of the good news, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Until the day when he was taken up to heaven, he had given commandments through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus is accursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the Spirit of glory, which is the Spirit of God, rests upon you. So also it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living person. The last Adam, Christ, became a life-giving spirit. Therefore I say to you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven men. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. But the hour is coming, and even now is here, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, 
and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. For through him, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. As for you, the anointing that you receive from him abides in you, and so you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, abide in him. When the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify about me. Peter and the Apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you put to death by hanging him on a cross. He is the one whom God exalted to his right hand as a prince and saviour, to grant repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and remind you of all that I said to you. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with water and with the blood. It is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and the three are in agreement.
if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. How can we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? It was declared at first through the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard him, while God added his testimony by signs and wonders and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. When he, the Spirit of Truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us, for after saying, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. So Jesus said to them again, Peace be to you. Just as the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will be abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit.